Hey yo, I'm Miss Linnea Lark and welcome back to Illustrate Away number 20. This week, I'm bringing you some Minecraft. Let's hit it. First, we gotta start with our rules. If you're new to the channel, I got four rules for you. Number one, remember that your failure is gonna lead to your growth. You gotta fail before you learn some stuff. Keep that in mind when you're not reaching total and utter perfection every time. Rule number two is to draw with your eyes and not with your brain. Your brain is gonna infuse its memories or ideas. It's not gonna give you accuracy. So make sure that you're going to Pinterest or Google Images or get a book or a magazine or old school with an encyclopedia. Whatever you gotta do, you need to get a picture of what it is that you're drawing so that you can look at the proportions and make sure that they are accurate. Get yourself a picture. Rule number three is to draw shape before you draw details. And what that means is that you need to get the overall general shape of your picture down first and then start adding fun details. Um, so for example, here you're seeing I'm drawing a truck, um, but before I, I start going into the bird on the logo, before I start drawing like the rounded cool door or the stripes, I have to get the basic shape of that truck first. Rule number four is to erase to fix and not to restart. I see this time and time again that beginners who aren't that good at drawing because guess what? They're beginners. They erase and then they erase and they erase every single time they make a mistake. If you erase everything that you try, you will have nothing in the end because you have erased it. So in order for you to make a drawing, you have to be okay with not being total and utterly perfect every step of the way. All right, now I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what Illustrate Away is. Uh, those of you that might be new, what we do here is every day of the school week, we draw. That could be for maybe five minutes every day. It might be if you have more time on your hands, like a 20 or 30 minute drawing. It might be that you're on house arrest and you have a bunch of art supplies. And so you're drawing for full on hours at a time. That's basically what I've been doing with my life. Um, so whatever kind of time you wanna give to this, that's what you're gonna do. But make sure that even if you're doing a quick drawing, that you're looking at a reference. So normally I don't do a scene for Illustrate Away. Normally it's just kind of like a sketchbook vibe where uh, you know I might have a creeper the size of the paper and then next to it I might have a wee bitty little cake next to it. And the sizes don't all match up. They don't work together to make a scene. It's just me practicing and trying different styles or techniques or skills out. Uh, but for this one I wanted to make it a little bit special to give my nephew and niece a scene um, to have in their rooms. Um, and so I wanted to kind of like put it together kind of nice like. So don't be intimidated by that. You can just do quick sketches. Uh, I have time to literally kill. So here I go. Uh, and what you'll find here is that I am doing a male lady and she is trying to deliver me some cakes. Yeah, because I ordered those cakes because cakes are delicious and the perfect way to convince yourself that you're not going to die. So oh, don't judge me. She's bringing me the cakes, but oh no, there's a Corona Creeper in her way. And from the skies jumping at her is Harold Bryant. Yeah, that's Harold Bryant. He's real. I know he's real because he leaves me signs sometimes. I don't know. That might be my nephew, but I think it's Harold Bryant. Or maybe it's just my nephew. I don't know. Why is he always blowing up my mind chest? <laughs> All right, so today I'm going to share a story with you guys about a time that I almost died. Yes, for reals. <laughs> Have you ever screamed for your life and hoped that someone showed up? It's one of those moments. All right, so today I wanna tell you an awesome story. It's kind of sad, it's kind of scary, but it's definitely awesome, uh, about how my two-year-old nephew saved my life. Here we go. I was 28 years old and I had just moved to Tanzania, Africa, um, a town called Dar es Salaam. And I, I'm type 1 diabetic and I have to take insulin every day since I was a girl um, to stay alive. And so um, I had a real hard time acclimating to the insulins that they had available. When they had them available, they weren't always available. Uh, so it was kind of a struggle there for a while. Um, but anyway, uh, one morning I wake up in my bed 
and it's like a Saturday, right? And I had like this, the sweetest maid in the entire world. Her name is Sada. She does not speak a lick of English. And while I took Kiswahili like lessons, they did not take me far. I am not what I would call a student of language. <laughs> does not come easily to me. So most of the time, uh, Sada and I would just play charades and kind of laugh and she would clean my house and, which is kind of how they do things there. Everyone has a maid there uh, and it's a part of like helping the community and being a part of the community. Um, so eventually I, I got a maid. I was like, okay, this is kind of what we do here. Um, and so Sada and I had kind of bonded, but anyway, she would come Monday through Friday. Uh, so it's a Saturday. I got the house to myself. Like I, you know, I like I'm sleeping in and I just remember waking up late in the day. The sun is fully up and there are all these crows that live out my window and they're all like, Ka -ka, Ka -ka. and I go to get up and I already knew that I didn't feel good. Like I could feel like my blood sugar was low. And so I'm like, okay, I gotta go to the kitchen. Gotta get me some sugar and it'll be fine. And I go to sit up to get out of my bed, which around my bed, tucked into my mattress, is a mosquito net because, well, malaria. Um, so I, I go to sit up and get out of the, the bedding, and the right side of my body does not work. And like, you think about parts of your body not working, you think like, what would I rather not have? like my feet or my hands or let me tell you what you want to have is your stomach. Your stomach is crucial. You don't realize it. You don't think about all the things that your core muscles do for you every day, but I'm telling you they're crucial because I go to sit up just to get my body out of the bed and I can't even do that. So like, I like, I try and I try again but I can't move my right arm. I can't move my right leg. I can't move my stomach muscles on the right side. Like I am like laying on this bed like I'm not going anywhere. And as I'm laying there listening to the crow's caw outside my window, I'm thinking, is this how I die? <laughs> like, like it's funny now, but in the moment it was pretty stinking serious. No parts of my body had ever failed me up until that point or since that point. And I'm like, what's going on? Am I having a stroke? Is it my blood? I don't, I had no idea what was happening. And so I come to the realization <laughs> that I'm going to have to scream for it. Like I live in this compound with all of my coworkers. It was a weird situation. And I'm hoping while well, everyone's windows are open because it's like 130 degrees, not really. But it's super hot outside and ain't none of us got electricity. And so I'm thinking, okay, someone's got to have their window open or be walking outside and can hear me scream for my life. They will come for me. I shall be rescued. So I give it a whirl and I'm like sobbing and I'm trying to gather air and push that air with my abdomen that doesn't work out of my mouth. And it comes out like a sad wail. And I'm just like, help. Help! And I'm like crying and realizing that these cinder block walls aren't helping me. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, Linnea, you've been screaming here for a while. No one's coming for you. It's Saturday. You're not going to see your friends today. No one knows that you're not okay. No one is expecting to see you today. So I like have like this moment where I have to talk myself out of letting myself die there in that bed. And I'm like, Linnea. This is not how you're going to die. You're not going to die in a bed by yourself on a Saturday. You're not doing it. And so I like talk to myself and I'm like, okay, if you can just with all of your might on your left side of your body, just like on the count of three, spring that out, you'll be fine. Right? Okay. So <laughs> I count down in my mind. Oh, what? <laughs> Two, did I mention my stomach doesn't work? Anyway, three, and I, you guys, it worked. It totally worked, but it didn't work well. <laughs> so as my left side of my body is propelling my body out of the bed, onto the left side of the bed, through the mosquito net, my body gets caught and tangled in the mosquito net. 
I fall out onto this hard wooden sharp end table with my face. Yes, with my face. I cut my lip open like completely. There is blood gushing everywhere. Like there's blood everywhere. Like I'm trying to use the left side of my body to prop myself up because my right arm and leg still aren't working. And I can't even prop my body up now because there's so much blood on the floor. It keeps sliding out from beneath my hand. And I'm still wrapped in this stinking mosquito net. So I finally, I like, I like take a break. I'm like, it's all right. And I untangle myself out of the mosquito net. I'm still in the pile of blood. And I start to try to crawl. I don't know why I thought I'd be able to crawl when I clearly couldn't even sit up. But that's where I was headed. And as I'm sitting in a pool of my own blood on the tile floors in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, by myself, I'm thinking, how in the world am I going to drag my like limp body out to the kitchen? And then it dawned on me, my little, my little nephew, who was two years old when I moved to Tanzania, he never crawled. He never crawled. Like one day he stood up and he just started walking, which would be great for me about now, but again, the stomach muscles. So, but before he could walk, what he would do is he would sit on his butt and he would scoosh himself around and around and around in circles to get somewhere. So he would just like with centrifugal force, find a path and take it. And so I'm like, I can do this. I can do that with the left side of my body. So I'm slipping in the blood, but I am spiraling my body circle by circle. I finally, I leave the bedroom. I am in the straight up hallway. And then before you know it, I am passing the bathroom. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And as I'm halfway to the kitchen, I'm thinking about the kitchen and where I might have some sugar in that kitchen. And I realize that I keep my Fanta bottles on top of the uh, counters. Yeah, well, a counter, a normal regular size counter would be hard enough at this point to get to. But the counters in this place were made extra tall, like 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 above your belly button tall, like, like your rib cage tall. And I'm thinking, how in the world am I going to get that Fanta down? So I keep going though. You guys, I'm not a quitter. I'm not giving up yet. I'm still bloody. My stomach and arms and legs don't work, but I'm still trying to give me some sugar. And so I'm just circling and spinning and circling and I'm like crying the whole time. I'm still yelling for help simultaneously. And eventually I get to the dining room. And as I'm going through the dining room, I see on the ground, a bottle of Fanta. You guys, I don't know that I've ever been so happy. <laughs> I'm like thanking God literally that I was so lazy. I left a bottle of Fanta on the floor probably days ago and there it is. And so I spin myself deeper into the dining room. I finally get to that bottle of Fanta and you guys, I am crying, but not out of like like sorrow or fear anymore out of like sheer happiness. And then I go to open that two liter bottle of soda and realize I can't do that with one hand. <laughs> I want you to try it. I want you to go home and I want you with one arm and one hand to unscrew a soda bottle. It's not happening. So I've got the bottle. I eventually, I can't use my right side of my body still. I've got like, I do like a bear hug with my left hand and I try to hold the bottle with my shoulder and then wrap my wrist weirdly around the top and try to unspin and unscrew that bottle top. You guys, it wasn't going to work. It was not going to work. I am sitting there for so long trying to unscrew that bottle. And I kid you not. I kid you not. After all my prayers and screaming and bloody circles, 
I promise you, Sada stinking walks in my door. Sada is my maid. She has a key to my house. And she never comes to my house on the weekends. Like, ever. Like, never, ever. But for some reason, she comes into my house on a Saturday and finds me on the dining room floor crying in my own blood, trying to get into a Fanta bottle. <laughs> I'm like trying to talk to Sada in Kiswahili, and that's not really happening, but she undoes and unscrews that bottle for me and helps me drink that soda and gets me back into a fit state where I can sit, stand, and walk within, you know, 30 minutes. It was amazing. So that is the story of the time I almost died alone in my my bedroom. Um, and what I really, the reason I wanted to tell this, not just because it's my nephew and this is his requested video, but because we're in crazy times. And when you've lived in crazy times, you know that you can get sucked in to your own fear. You can stop yelling and screaming for help. You can stop trying when you know that it's never going to work. When you get caught in your bed linens and bust your lip open, and there's blood everywhere and you can't even move and you finally move and then you get to your destination and you finally get what you need and then you can't even open that bottle. And right now it feels like that for some of us. We can't even go outside without fear and without panic facing us every single day. So what I want you guys to do, I know you've been drawing really hard. I want you to take a minute and maybe on the side of your sketchbook, I want you to think about the man or the woman that you either are or that you want to become. And I want you to think of what kind of strengths of character you want to have. And I want you, I want you to challenge yourself in these times of stress and anxiety. I want you to find ways to be a peacemaker, ways to have strength and to not give in to your own fear because your own fear is going to tell you, you can't do it and that everything's set up against you. But if you just keep trying and you keep inching your way one step, one little struggling step closer to where you know that everything is going to be okay. You just keep inching in those little baby steps closer and closer to your destination. You can get there. Even if it's horrible, even if it's hard, but we got to remember to have some levity. We got to remember to find humor. We got to remember that we can turn this into something awesome. Think about how amazing at drawing you can get if you spend one to two hours every day of this like month long break drawing. Like who has time like this on their hands in, in your everyday schedule? Look for the blessings that you can find in this huge struggle that our whole world, our whole entire world is going through this at the same time. Um, so take comfort in each other, find ways to reach out to people, not just the people that you know really well and that you love a lot, but maybe people that you don't know as well that maybe you can encourage. So find somebody to encourage today and remember that you're strong. You're so strong and you can do this. All right. That's your illustrate away. <laughs> uh, happy day. You're strong.